Mr. Caparos, you wrote a quite impressive book about hunger. Um, we should we could say hunger is not so much a topic of this time. It is a topic of the 60s, and you could say everything has been said about hunger in this world. Mm. Although you even managed to um, to write such a very impressive book about the issue, why did you ch uh, choose this? topic to write this book? Mm. Well, I, I, I choose it mainly because I, uh, I used to, 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 to uh, find uh, hunger wherever I, were. I, I, I went to uh, uh, write about other different problems, I don't know, migrations or wars or whatever uh, uh, social conflicts I was uh, writing about. I had the impression that hunger was lying somewhere beside or behind uh, the, sto the, the problems I was addressing. So I wanted to uh, write specifically about it. Uh, but as you said, I had the feeling that everything has, had been said mm. about the point. And then I began to think that, uh, well, maybe that wasn't that true, that maybe uh, we had the feeling that uh, we knew all we wanted to know about, about hunger because we didn't want to know that much. So uh, it was easy to, to dismiss. And uh, my first uh, principle to try to think what to do was that uh, there is not such a thing as hunger, uh, but uh, hungry people and many of them, and that I wanted to uh, give them back their personalities, their individuality, their mm -hmm. stories. Mm -hmm. And I started with this uh, um, idea, and after that I was, well, had to develop it. Mm -hmm. You traveled to Niger, India, Cameroon, uh, Burkina Faso, Madagascar. Mm -hmm. How did you make this selection of countries? Why this selection? Yeah, well, I, I selected the countries because I also assumed that uh, usually we uh, talk about hunger, but there, there is not one hunger. There is many different ways in which hunger <coughs> acts and manifests uh, itself, different mechanisms and different structures, and that I wanted to show uh, the most uh, possible amount of them. Um, so I tried to see in which places I could uh, show these different, mm -hmm. different mechanisms, and that, that's why I went, uh, in fact, yeah, to India, because it's a place where the most hungry people live in the world, and Bangladesh, because it's a place where uh, the hunger is used to force people to work for nothing, and uh, to Niger, because they, said, they used to say that this is uh, where structural hunger happened, and I want to see what, whether it was true or not, and then, well, to many other places, just in order to see different, uh, as I told you, ways in which it, uh, it works. Mm -hmm. And were there uh, surprises in all this um, uh, research that you did not in not so much as facts and figures, but uh, insights that you didn't know before that changed really your mind and your <coughs> perception of the problem? Many, of course. Yeah, there were many surprises. Uh, fortunately, because if not, uh, I wouldn't feel that I was doing anything. Uh, mm -hmm. Interesting. New, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, if you just uh, confirm what you uh, thought at the beginning, you're just waiting your time. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was, yeah, many different and new things that I learned. Maybe the most uh, general and global was that something that I should have known, but I didn't. I, uh, it was that uh, there are like maybe one and a half billion people in the world that are of no use for the global system, mm -hmm. that the global system d does not know even how to exploit them. Uh, and of course, all, uh, all the hungry people, most, uh, almost all of the hungry people are part of it, but they're even more than that. And uh, that it's a very strange, th a strange thing. I mean, a system that is not able to exploit the whole of its resources and that has this kind of a surplus of, 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 of people. Uh, and well, there is a lot of consequences of that, but the, the, the finding that this enormous quantity of people uh, exist in that condition uh, well, was very striking for me. Mm -hmm. And then you also say um, hunger is 
um, as many courses, as many um, routes, uh, but uh, one thing is sure, it is not because of the lack of food. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 yeah. The hunger, uh, hunger has many reasons, but lack of food is not one of them, mm -hmm. I could say. And yeah, because this is, this is a big uh, and enormous uh, change that went absolutely uh, unrecorded like 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, humanity was for the first time able to produce food enough for all yeah. uh, of its members, uh, which makes uh, contempor contemporary hunger even more violent because it is not more, uh, it is no more the fact that we are not able to feed ourselves, is that uh, some part of humanity concentrates so much of our resources that there are eight or nine hundred million people that don't uh, have enough to eat, but they should be enough because the earth produces uh, food for uh, 12,000 million people and we are seven, uh, Seven, uh, seven billion and mm. two hundred or three hundred, mm -hmm. so there should be enough for everyone. But uh, this concentration of wealth uh, produces uh, the the lack of, of food uh, for all these people. Mm -hmm. So you are saying hunger is a man-made problem. It is a political problem. What kind of politics do we need to tackle this problem? <coughs> because you are very critical for the UN, UN inst uh, institutions, uh, mm. for the World Food Program. Mm. Yeah? Well, let's say that this, this inequality uh, that organizes our world is uh, like represented by hunger. Hunger is like the extreme uh, metaphor and the extreme effect mm -hmm. of this inequality. Mm -hmm. uh, so. To solve, to really solve it, we should uh, solve or change this in, uh, inequality. We don't know which is a political system that's able to do that. We, I, I, we thought we knew for, like, I don't know, maybe a century and a half. We thought that this political system was called uh, socialism or communism or whatever. We discovered that it didn't work, that it had so many problems and, and, uh, and such. Now we don't know. I mean, I, I say in the, I wrote somewhere in the book that I would like to, the, the world to have what I call a moral economy, an mm -hmm. economy in which uh, no, everyone has what they need and no one has too much. And that I, 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 I keep thinking the point is, of course, I don't know which is the political system able to sustain this kind of, uh, of economy, but I think that it's uh, worth looking for. I mean, it's, it's the thing that is worth looking for. And I know that there, is, there are many people in many places of the world that are looking for it. Okay, thank you so much for this interview. And I recommend everybody to, to read the book, which is very fascinating. Thank, thank you. you.